Okay, this is going to be just too much fun. This morning we're in for a real treat. I've had the pleasure to know Paul now and work with him for more than 15 years. It's been one of the most pleasurable experiences of my career. Paul is not only a world-class firefighter, but he's a true gentleman, artist, and friend. Paul first came to fire engineering, we concocted this wild scheme. We thought, why not create a cover that would be emblematic of my commander's fight talk at the beginning of FDIC? Being the two simple-minded guys we were, we didn't think it would be a very difficult task. But it is. Capturing a 20-minute goofy rant with multiple nuanced ideas in a photo or illustration turned out to be a heck of a lot harder than the two of us ever dreamed it could possibly be. Yet somehow, year after year, Paul has managed to capture exactly what I was trying to convey, as exemplified by the photo you're now looking at on the big screen. That's the April 2019 cover of Fire Engineering. That engine DE-413, that's the Sammy B. Roberts. That's the quote from Lieutenant Commander Copeland, and the two firefighters they represent that indissolvable bond of brotherhood, loyalty, commitment, and courage. Only Paul Combs could do such a thing. Only Paul Combs could capture, month after month, some aspect of the fire service that we were all thinking about at many different levels with an incredibly subtle yet deep illustration that blows us all away. You know, sometimes it's just the rise of an eyebrow or one of his characters with a furrowed brow or the onlooker, just some detail in the art that all get, gives us all that same feeling that, yeah, this guy gets it. That's exactly what I was thinking. Paul has been an illustrator in many other forums besides FD, uh, fire engineering. His work has appeared around the world, and Paul has traveled as part of the USO tour illustrating for the uh, soldiers all around the world, bringing joy to the servicemen and servicewomen who are deployed. Paul is never one to brag or boast, but I asked him to come here today and share with you what makes the most eloquent spokesperson in the entire fire service tick. Where does his inspiration come from, and where does he see us going? Paul Combs is a lieutenant and 23-year veteran of the Bryan, Ohio Fire Department. He is a firefighter, an EMTB, a hazmat technician. He's an instructor at the Regional Fire Academy. He's a presenter at HOT. He's an assistant instructor. He presents at FDIC International and at, an instructor for the Ohio Fire Academy. He is the editorial cartoonist for Fire Engineering and FireEngineering.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the keynote speaker for today, Mr. Lieutenant Paul Combs. I cannot believe where I'm standing. You know, it's been nearly 20 years ago that I attended my very first FDIC. It's the first time I've been outside my department's area, experiencing department's big, small volunteer career. You know, I remember my hot classes like it was yesterday. It was firefighter self-survival and structural collapse. Two full days of breaching walls, jumping headfirst out of windows, crawling through collapsed debris. It was awesome. I was teamed up with brothers from Long Island, New York, Macon, Georgia, and Lafayette, Louisiana. And I swear I was the only one who could speak English. <laughs> Our Cajun brother would say, Ah, oh, that move there is as sweet as my mama's etouffee. Now, this is before you could just Google something. So it was 10 years before we realized it wasn't something dirty about his mother. <laughs> you know, we still keep in touch, and to this day, we do not know what our Louisiana brother's saying. But that's the beauty of the FDIC culture. It's coming together after a year apart and giving each other that FDIC embrace. God, I love that hug. You know the one I'm talking about. 
Without a word, it says we've been a year apart, but we're back together again. We've survived the sweat, the tears, the pain. That's brotherhood and sisterhood at its finest. However, it was that Wednesday's keynote at the general session that changed my life. That year, Chief Rick Lasky gave a keynote address about having pride in yourself and in your department and taking ownership of both. As I sat and listened, right back there, about four rows in from that exit, I could pick out the seat. I looked around to see if the ground was shaking for anyone else because it was for me. Now, I had never met Chief Lasky. And from his perspective on this stage, I was just another nameless face in the crowd. But I knew that someday I wanted to be just like him. I wanted to be making a difference with my passion. Now, it didn't take long for me to realize that I am not a dynamic public speaker. Okay, I cannot move mountains with the written word. But what I can do is draw. Okay, that's my tool. And that's how I can make a difference. So my drawn by fire journey began right here on this stage nearly 20 years ago. And I can think of no better gift to give to somebody to inspire them to follow their passion. So Chief, where are you Chief? Chief Lasky, thank you for inspiring me and so many others to be better. Folks, Chief Lasky. Leaders like Chief Lasky have inspired so many with their passion. And just like he had no idea what he was starting in me 20 years ago, we never know the impact sometimes in the lives we have of others. And we never take those opportunities for granted. Because sometimes it's the little things we do that make the biggest impact in the lives of others. You know, I'm reminded of a call that my department had a few years ago. We were called out in the late morning for a dog trapped on the ice. We arrive on scene to find a dog. She's out running around a frozen pond chasing geese, dragging about 20 feet of chain behind her. So there's no apparent danger to the dog, so we decide we're going to make a cold water, ice water type training exercise out of this. So we gather all of our gear, two of our firefighters start donning their wetsuits. We set up an elaborate system of ropes and rigging. And our guys began to crawl out onto the ice with different tools and techniques. And I didn't have an immediate role in this training, so I observed from the bank where the ice had started to recede about six feet in a stream-fed water into the pond. As the guys got about 100 feet out into the ice, the dog finally notices them. And it scares the crap out of this dog. She begins to run from them. So me and my partner, we start calling her, and she starts running our way. She gets to the edge of the ice. She tries to jump the distance when the chain she's dragging snags on something. She misses the shore, she falls in the water, and the current begins to take her underneath the ice. So what started as a training exercise is now an urgent animal rescue. So we wade in about thigh deep, grab her chain, pull her to me, my partner undoes her collar. No big deal, right? The local paper was on hand, and they take this great photo of me and the dog as we're looking back at the guys on the ice who are now flipping us off. <laughs> that photo didn't make the paper. But when I carried her back to the owners, they were in tears because this dog was like a child to them. Because sometimes, it's the little things we do that make the biggest impact in the lives of others. We all love going to the structure fires, the car accidents. Those are the sexy things we get to do as firefighters. We love that shit. But sometimes it's the small calls that mean the most. It's going on a lift assist because Mrs. Johnson doesn't have the strength to pull herself back up onto her bed. It's going out at 3 a.m. and setting a family's mind at ease because their smoke or CO alarm is chirping and they just don't know why. 
You know, sometimes it's a small gesture, kind word. Hey, brother, how are you doing today? Good morning, sister. Saying it, meaning it, and listening. It's teaching a skill from the tailboard of a truck. And sometimes it's on the national stage, speaking to hundreds of thousands of nameless faces. But you do all of this knowing that you could make a difference and change someone's life. It's about passion, brothers and sisters. Passion. This is a photo of my fire department's first true firehouse. It stood and served our community for over 130 years before being replaced a few years ago. Firehouse was built by men with strong hands and a duty to their community. It was built one brick at a time with care, skill, and expertise. You know, the firehouse was expanded over time, but the original brick stayed the same. Bricks like this one. An original cornerstone brick laid in 1875 still bears the scars of the mason's hammer. I love what this brick represents. Because to me, this represents everything that is great about the fire service. Sir Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And I believe this to be true. Because every one of us in this room are standing on the shoulders of greatness. Each of us were handed a brick when we started our fire service journey. We were handed this brick so we could build upon the wall of those who came before us that they began. All right, to make it stronger, taller, longer. To add to its beautiful legacy of service and dedication. I believe it is our sacred duty to leave the fire service better than we found it. And we found it pretty good, amen? You all going to leave a brother hanging this morning? Amen? amen? There we go. You know, one of the things I love to do when I visit other firehouses, is I love to look for old photos on the walls. I gravitate to that. Because that's your history, your journey. And my guess is that every firehouse represented here at FDIC, you have these photos on your walls. Of the old rigs, the historic fires, of the firefighters who gave a damn. You know the ones I'm talking about. The first in, the last out guys. The firefighters who would do patient chest compressions until exhaustion to free up the hands of the paramedics so they can give their life-saving drugs. The ones who do all the right things when no one's looking simply because it is the right thing to do. I seriously doubt there are any photos of firefighters on your walls that just mailed it in. No. No, those spots are reserved for the, selfless, the, the people who serve selflessly and with honor. There are men and women who made a difference. The ones you still tell stories about, yes? So let me ask you, what will your legacy be? When it's all said and done, and you've walked out of that firehouse for the last time, there'll be a void left in your absence. Will you be missed? Will you have earned a hallowed place on those firehouse walls? And if not, why? What will your legacy say about you? You know, I used to talk about that previous cartoon as if you'd had a long career and you'd walked away into a glorious retirement. That all changed for me January 19th, 2017. For those who may not know, this is E.J. Mascaro. E.J. was an Iraq War veteran, two and a half tours, Bronze Star, Purple Heart recipient. He's an American hero. When E.J. left the Army, he began to pursue his lifelong dream of firefighting. His journey took him from Erie, PA, to Charleston, South Carolina, to finally landing with the North Charleston Fire Department. 
E.J. quickly became known for his energetic teaching style, keen curiosity to learn everything he could, and for having the ability to annoy as many people with his boyish pranks and relentless smart-ass wit. But E.J. became a rock star in the fire service not because of selfish ambition, because he had a love and a passion for the craft and for the people he called brothers and sisters. He has, his passion was infectious. All right, he left an impact on everyone he met. He wasn't a perfect man. My God, he was an honest one. And he wore his passion on his sleeve because he was a firefighter and he was proud of it. You know, EJ and I often spoke and talked about what it would be like to be on this stage someday. To be able to share our passion with so many. In fact, the weekend before he died, he and I were teaching together in Ohio. And I just learned that I was going to be this year's keynote speaker. And that Bobby was considering him too. He got so excited. He bought me, I think, like three PBRs at once. <laughs> this was news I never shared with anyone for nearly two years. Because after he died, I didn't know if I wanted to be up here without him. Missing out on sharing and critiquing our keynotes, practicing together, the late night phone calls, busting each other's balls. Finally, I knew that he would want me to do this, and for no other reason is that he could be here too. So I brought him with me this morning. Buddy, you made it up here. This is EJ. Come on, folks, let him hear you. Passion. Passion, passion, passion. We owe, we owe nothing less to EJ and hundreds just like him who made an impact in our lives. They took their brick, they placed it on that wall, and they said, give me another. And I dare each of you today, just as I dare myself every single day to live up to their legacy. Most days I fail, but I never stop trying because it is my duty to use my brick whether it be on a nozzle, a ladder, a saw, or by God, the sharp tip of a pin. Of all the cartoons I've drawn over the years, this one's my favorite. It simply says, this symbol owes you nothing. But if you dedicate yourself to it, it will give you everything. The symbol may provide a salary, Benefits, a pension, a sense of community, but it owes you nothing. But if you give yourself to it, it will give you everything. I'm living proof of this. There is absolutely nothing special about me. So I can draw. You know a lot of people can draw. But because I gave myself my talent and my passion to the symbol, it has given me everything. I have found my boots in every corner of this world serving the military on USO tours. I've been given an opportunity to share my voice in fire engineering, to teach here at FDIC as a hot instructor and presenter. And I find myself here on this stage this morning talking to you, as unlikely as that is. Because I don't know if it shows, but I am terrified of public speaking. I am. I'd much rather be somewhere in the back of this stage drawing and sketching as an introvert. But I overcome this irrational fear because I believe in my work and I have a passion for my message. Because it's about passion and the legacy we build 
and giving it away to others. We were all handed a brick when we started our fire service journey. Some of us took it to the wall, we placed it firmly in mortar, and we asked for another. Some of you are still searching, still carrying your brick around, not sure what to do with it. That's okay. At least you're still searching. <laughs> because others, they laid their brick down and they walked away. I'm handing you a brick today. What will you do with it? Not next year, not next month, but today. Because just like EJ, just like Brad, and others just like them, you may not have tomorrow. So what difference will you make today? Will you build on your legacy of lifting up others? My brothers and sisters, take your brick and build on that wall. Thank you. For EJ, folks. For EJ. Did you tell him he was a blue spader? What's that? Just so our Army friends know, EJ was a blue spader. Yeah. So, thank you, brother. Thank you. Love you. Before we go, Paul Combs. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Paul, take your brick. I was going to come back for it. Love you. We're going to do something that was kind of uh, unplanned, but at this time, if you're a firefighter, I'd like to call this room to attention. Room? It's in hot! I think we should pay a salute at this time to Marine Staff Sergeant Christopher Slutman, FDMY firefighter, who was killed in action while serving the United States of America in Afghanistan three days ago. Present Harms! Shoulder, arms. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Thank you. I'd like to thank Brian Windsor for allowing us to put him on the spot. I think he ran off to go teach his class, amazingly. I would like to thank all of you, the Honeywell recipients. See you in the room. Honeywell folks, where are you? They usually sit together like, ah, oh, like the swans to cap the air. Like, there you are. Please stand up. These are our Honeywell recipients. Thank you. Would all of our, would all of our uh, veterans in active duty please stand up? Hooah! Yo! Finally, to Donnie, thank you so much for coming down today, and thank you for 30 years. You're amazing. So we love you so much, brother. Boy, Paul Combs was something, huh? Yeah. And he can draw, too. Hey, listen, a lot of great stuff happening tonight. The Fool's Bash, obviously. I'll be back at 5 o'clock with my friend Bill Gustin and John Norman for Unplugged. We hope you have a great rest of the conference. Classrooms are going to be opening up in a few moments. We've got 211 of them for you, so choose wisely. I'd like to thank you all for being here. We love you. God bless and have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>